Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Family First Sunday November. Uh, today, we're going to be dealing with pop art portraits. So first and foremost, we just want to say welcome. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Uh, we're going to be learning about the artist Andy Warhol and his work. Um, we're pulling directly from the UCR Arts collection, so we're very, very excited to be sharing with you guys a little bit something from the UCR Arts collection. Um, you can find it on our website or in person. Ho hopefully, we'll be opening up pretty much soon. Okay, so first and foremost, we're going to be dealing with pop art. We're going to define pop art. We're going to delve into it, and we're going to explain it. So we're learning about um, one of the big artists in the pop art movement, which was Andy Warhol. Um, you might be familiar with the term pop art, which was, which was used to describe his colorful prints. Um, pop art was an art movement that started in the late 1950s. It challenged traditional art by focusing on images from popular and mass culture, like comics, advertisements, celebrities, etc. Pop art often uses bright colors and sharp lines to capture people's attention. And our do-it-yourself project is inspired by two of Warhol's prints um, in the previous slide, the Queen Elizabeth and the Annie Oakley uh, in the, the top right and the bottom left, respectively. Um, and if you follow along with our video today, you're gonna make um, your very own Warhol-inspired prints, which we're very excited uh, to share with you guys today. So let's go into a little bit and we'll talk a little bit about Andy Warhol himself. So Andy Warhol was the son of immigrants. His parents moved to New York City from Slovakia in the 1920s. Andy took his first job illustrating for fashion magazines. The popular images of models, fine clothing, and other products would heavily influence his artwork. When Warhol decided to create art, he was inspired by popular culture. Um, popular culture is anything a lot of people really like and promote, like Coca-Cola, pop stars, and fashion brands. Warhol started out making prints of Campbell's Soup, a popular brand in the United States. In fact, he claimed that he ate Campbell's tomato soup every day for lunch for 20 years. Andy Warhol had a very interesting style, I think, as you can see here on our slide. Um, he had bright white hair and wore lots of black clothing. He dressed up and experimented with his look and made a lot of self-portraits. And a self-portrait is a picture, painting, or sculpture of an artist made by that artist. So, like I've said before, Warhol liked to use bright colors and he made silk screen prints. Um, he liked that he could mass produce pictures through silk screen printing. He based a lot of his prints on famous celebrities like the actress Marilyn Monroe and the Queen of England. Warhol was inspired by the vibrant city of Los Angeles. He loved things that were beautiful, modern, and changed quickly. And we hope that after today's projects, you're going to find out what inspires you. So without further ado, let's get into our projects. All right, everybody, so this is our Queen Elizabeth II inspired portrait, um, the one that had little uh, brightly colored squares in it. And as you can see here, I have some tissue paper, which I uh, cut up into various size squares. Um, I have some Elmer's clear glue, um, a cup, and a paintbrush. Uh, when I tried to do this, this project a little earlier, um, I had tried just gluing down the pieces of tissue paper with just the glue and I found it kind of made a bit of a mess so I really recommend using a little paintbrush to help you have a little bit more control and have a little bit less of a mess when you're making this collage. So as you can see in the video um, I'm just layering um, the tissue paper onto a piece of cardstock I, I used as the base and that's going to be useful for us because it's going to create sort of a little collage um, of various different colored tissue paper. As you can see, it's kind of coming all together. I've got, you know, the yellow, the red, the oranges, all layering them on top of each other um, with the paintbrush, with the glue, and just waiting for that to dry. And as you can see with the blue, um, as you layer different colors on top of each other, 
uh, it does create like different effects, which I found really, really fun, really interesting. So again, you can choose whatever color you like. I just chose kind of like sunset colors because I think they're really fun and I always think that they're really, they work really well together. But you can use any colors you want. You can use purples, greens, whatever, whatever you have available at home um, and whatever, whatever, you know, tickles your fancy as a color palette. And so you're going to let that dry after you uh, layer your final pieces. So I layered the yellow. Um, I think I'm finishing off with a little bit of the oranges here. Um, but as soon as you let it dry, which will take maybe half an hour to potentially all night, um, once that's dried, you'll be ready to draw on top of it with your marker, which I have on the side. Okay, so my uh, my collage is finally all dry, and I'm taking out my little black marker, and I am drawing the portrait, which is actually a picture of my dad that I printed off the internet. Um, if you don't have access to a printer, that's okay. You can just draw from memory, or you can look at a picture uh, from a book as you draw. Um, and if you are going to print out a picture, I do recommend that you put it in black and white. I just think it simplifies the image and makes it a lot easier to draw all the essential parts of the picture um so yeah i'm just getting down the basics you know just getting the shadows of my dad's face here um i always like to start with the face first and then do everything else later and this is this part of the video i'm just adding the details and really trying to make it look like him um, I'm really trying to capture all those details and I'm coloring and I'm adding those bold sharp lines uh, like we talked about which are a staple of the pop art style and because we just want this to be very eye-catching we want this to be um, very bold especially with such a colorful background it can be a, a little hard to see if we're not using really bold lines uh, on such a colorful background. Okay, and then now I'm just shading uh, the important parts. So like my dad's coat right here, I'm, I'm just shading that in black uh, so I can make the rest of him pop out on the picture. Um, so we can really see him and then I'm just taking a thicker black marker and I'm outlining uh, the whole image so it really pops out against that background and there you have it that is our final image and I signed it real quick and this was really easy really fun and I'm really curious to see what you guys come up with all right so this is our Annie Oakley inspired portrait um, you're going to need some scissors, a picture of a friend uh, or someone you really look up to. Uh, I chose Lupita Nyong'o and I printed her out and I cut it out. And now I am going to glue her onto a piece of blue cardstock. You can choose whatever color you want. I just chose that nice blue because I thought it looked really nice. And again, if you don't have a printer, you can always draw the picture um, in pencil and then outline it in black later. Um, so right now I'm just choosing a lot of fun, interesting colors, you know, definitely trying to make this look very like war, Warhol inspired, um, choosing really bright, really interesting colors. So I start off with the orange for the earring and then I'm choosing this really beautiful, um, burgundy pink for the nails. Uh, and then I think I'm going to move on to her lips pretty soon. Yeah, and I'm choosing again like that nice burgundy pink color and I am now painting directly onto my image uh, to make the the image pop and I'm trying to make it look very much kind of like those Marilyn Monroe prints. I was very inspired by that um, as well as the Annie Oakley picture with the pink uh, skin and, you know, the colorful clothing. So we're just trying to make this image look really beautiful, really colorful. So when you're doing your own painting, just choose all the wild and crazy colors that you want and just apply it on there and just have a lot of fun with it because um, that's what it's all about. 
So I chose green for her eyelids and then now I'm moving down onto her dress and I decided to color that orange uh, because as we've talked about many times before, I like to use complementary colors, specifically orange and blue because I just love the way they look together. Um, and I thought that orange would be a really good color because it would really um, enhance the background. All right, and I'm finishing up here with her dress and I'm just gonna soon be moving on to coloring um, her highlights, especially on her skin, and then moving on after that to her hair. Um, and so again, I chose that beautiful pink because I, I just love that flushed look in the uh, An Annie Oakley inspired, uh, or the Annie Oakley print by Warhol, that's at the UCR Arts collection. So I'm just putting that directly onto her face. I'm choosing mostly highlights. Um, so the bright portions of her skin where the light uh, really shines and I'm just adding that on there and you know with watercolors especially sometimes you have to uh, layer the colors on top of a base so I'm doing exactly that with this pink I'm just kind of going over uh, what I originally painted to make it look a little bit more colorful a little bit more bold and then I'm taking that that nice royal blue color and I'm coloring over um, her eyebrows, um, I'll eventually move on to her, the shadow, so yeah, like under her nose, um, I'm applying sort of like eyeliner on there, uh, and then yeah, going back over with the shadows and making them really pop out with the blue color, and so yeah, going over her hair, just adding that fun little little element that really makes these works so so beautiful and so fun to look at so you don't have to do you know everything that I do word for word color for color like this is completely up to you like the creativity all of these things are up to you and you can choose whatever colors you want you know again you can choose whatever image you want and the most important part about these projects is to just have fun with it and and enjoy yourself All right, I seem to almost be finished about it here. I'm just kind of adding some finishing touches. And there you have it, my own uh, Andy Warhol, Andy Oakley inspired print. Um, I'm very excited to see what you guys come up with.